everyone, I just have a few disclaimers before we get started. I know it's annoying, but I delete any comments that are clearly ignoring these disclaimers, so it's probably worth listening to if you want to make sure your comment survives the comment section Hunger Games. First of all, please remember that this video is for comedy purposes only. Sometimes I pretend I don't know things, make weird connections, or exaggerate stuff. That doesn't mean I hate the series or that I haven't read the books, it's just for comedic effect. This isn't an actual summary video, it's meant as satire, so chill. On the same note, this video is about some minor antagonists of Wings of Fire. An antagonist can be described as a character who poses a threat or danger to the protagonist or other people, and a lot of characters fit that description. So I want to be clear that I'm not doing any characters that I've already done, like Whirlpool, any characters that are debatable on their villainy, like Chameleon, and any characters that I'm saving for another video, like Queen Diamond. This also means that I'm not doing main villains, because I actually have a video for that. You can watch that with the i card above. Finally, this video will contain spoilers for Wings of Fire all the way up to the 10th book, Darkness of Dragons. You've been warned. You know, I've always been kind of fascinated by side characters. Oftentimes, I like them more than I like the protagonists, and that holds true for Wings of Fire as well. Especially when the antagonists can range anywhere from a pile of wet socks to a ray of evil sunshine, and no, I am not telling you who is who. Speaking of mysterious one-liners, let us welcome to the stage Fierce Teeth the Nightwing, who single-handedly took the trophy for being the annoying stereotype of every older sister ever. At this point, I'm surprised she isn't texting her boyfriend Strong Wings and spending hours in the bathroom. Everything about her screams... That's it. She kind of just yells a lot and bosses around her muscular hunk of a nightwing around. Luckily for her, things took a turn for the better when she became the personal errand dragon for the huge animus hybrid who wants to take over the world and who turned her into a fictional version of his ex-girlfriend. And you may be wondering, how is that better? And that's a good question. Crocodile the Mudwing is a spy. Th that's it. And to be honest, I'm noticing a theme with every Mudwing in the series having little to no plot relevance. Don't at me. Don't get me wrong, Mudwings are neat, but Crocodile in particular has nothing going for her except that she has the name of a really cool animal and happens to be the former spy for the angry warrior Sandwing princess who died when a snake nibbled her foot. Not that spies aren't cool, but Crocodile did have a good run before being slapped in the face with acid and is assumed to be dead, so the Mission Impossible theme really didn't last long for her. Speaking of lasting a long time, how about Queen Battlewinner's anger at dragons who didn't know she existed? I'm sure you all know the glorious story of that time the majestic Nightwing Queen got blasted in the face by ice cream and had brain freeze so bad that she had to sit in a pot of lava fondue for the rest of her life. Truly a tragic story, but what's more, while she was busy choosing between the chocolate swirl or the vanilla ice cream, her tribe is dying. The disease, of course, being lack of oxygen and food, because the Nightwings had the brilliant idea to put their home under an active volcano. So naturally, the only logical explanation is to invade the rainforest and enslave the oblivious Rainwings that live there. Onyx, the Sandwing princess and rightful heir to the throne, did not get the pretty crown she wanted, and is now sulking with a mangled foot and a bad attitude. But you may be wondering, what happened? Well, we don't know either, because Tui left it intentionally vague. Thanks, it's not like we wanted to know what happened during that sandstorm. Anyway, Onyx had started working for an underground mafia boss who promises to put her on the throne. For some reason, she believes this, despite the obvious red flags, and goes to the murder school to find out more info. This is just further proof that the dragons running the school are completely insane, because there is something wrong with you if you don't see the problem with an almost 20-year-old running around with 3- and 4-year-olds pretending to be the same age. Oh hey, speaking of that mafia boss, let's talk about Vulture the Sandwing, who is totally not running a cult, you guys. In addition to convincing princesses to trust him, he is the grandfather of Kibli, and seems to think that his grandson would rather stay with him in his deadly fortress than with his actual friends. When the plot to kill off the actual queen fails, Vulture is left visiting his friend Darkstalker. He appears once in his friend's castle to judge his non-existent pile of money and then leaves again, before coming back to star in a one-dragon show. His acting is truly impeccable, as his actions are controlled completely like a puppet on the strings, and his mind is altered to change based on how the dragon in front of him wants him to think. And wait, how do people still think Darkstalker is a good guy? Don't at me for that last joke. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed, and Ultimate out.